Doug. You found me. I knew you were. It's all right, Rosie. It's all right. Shh, shh, shh. Where? It's okay. It's all right. I'm here now. You're safe now. You're safe. I intend to be sure you stay that way. One cap to go. What a guy. Thanks, so. Oh, you should talk. After what you did for my boy. Oh, that reminds me. Those building blocks you gave him for Christmas took to him like a duck to water. I think we got a future architect on our hands. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'll have to stop by and give him a few pointers. Oh, any time. <laughs> the wife would love it. All right. Then we'll make it soon. Oh, great. Mr. Keller? Yeah, Royce? I'm Mr. Markham. What are you doing here? Mr. Keller, this is... Yeah, 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 I know. So you, uh, um... Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh, what to say, what to do. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I... I I'm to... not surprised. Um, from the way you've been hiding out, uh, I kind of figured that um, you weren't too crazy about meeting me at all. Yeah, I try not to be too crazy about anything these days. <laughs> So, yeah. twins. So they tell me. I told you so, Sam. It was meant to be. This, this uh, proves it. Daddy, I don't think I would go that cosmic, but um, I will give you weird. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> Boy, I was just sure that this whole twin thing was a figment of Lou's mythically proportioned imagination. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess uh, we could assume that uh, there's some divine purpose to all this and uh, try to get to know each other a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you make it sound like root canal. You're not exactly what I expected. Same here. I don't believe it. How did this happen? What can I say? Kismet. Which does not explain what you're doing here. I'm looking for you. Lucinda got all weird when I let you out without a leash. Yeah, Before well, uh, we beat you to it. She'll be thrilled. Oh, boy, you know, whew, meeting without the matriarch here, this is not good. Okay, Royce, let's give her a break and move this to the mansion. Fat chance. Royce, fair is fair. She pulled a few strings to make this happen. Yeah, which is exactly what we don't need right now. She'll have us in matching sailor suits inside of 30 minutes. Now, if, if Samantha and I are going to do this, and we got to do it on our own, on our own terms, no pressure, no nobody feeding us dialogue. Uh, you you want to move this to my place? All right, yeah, that's actually good. I'll tell you what, I'll Craig, give you what? No big sister, no big sister's son in law. And wherever we go from here, if we go anywhere, it's going to be between me and my Samantha. Hi. Hi. How long have I been here? A few days. Oh, your friends have kept uh, quite a vigil around the clock. And you? Have you been here? Jessica and I have both been here. So 
Well, homecoming. Thank you. Both. And Jess. I don't know what to say. You're doing all this for me. Under the circumstances. Good evening. Welcome back. Oh. I hear I gave you a pretty hard time. Oh, no. Piece of cake. Actually, a friend of mine is a tropical disease specialist, and she pieced this together for us pretty fast. I mean, the thing I had was something I picked up in Africa. Uh-huh. Very fancy. Uh, very fancy name. Called Cotsgraves fever. Oh. It's caused by a spider bite. You're one lucky lady that the fever broke. You mean I, I could have died? Uh-huh. Spider bite, I, I, I don't remember getting bitten or anything. Well, you wouldn't necessarily, actually. Uh, we might not have known, except that Duncan noticed a, a bite mark on your arm. Luckily for Duncan, this disease is uh, rarely contagious. And still you stayed, knowing that it might be contagious? I shouldn't be surprised. I would do the same for you. Well, you hungry? Should we replace that IV with some real food? Well, <clears throat> Shannon, you're awake. You up for some gin? Uh, the card type, I mean. You know, when Shannon was my house group, we used to play gin all the time. Penny a point. What do you say, kid? What a sport. Well, maybe I'll get even now. <laughs> oh, Lord, I hope you don't plan on keeping me here that long. <laughs> Speaking of which, when can my darling husband take me home? We've been away from each other far too long. Ah, thank you. What's this ulterior motive behind the dinner invite? Okay. Do you remember the Griswold hijacking? Are you kidding? Never forget it. It was Margot's first big collar. Has to be ten years ago. Exactly. Yeah. It was an armored car holdup. But the feds moved in. We never did tie up those loose ends. Well, we're liable to be able to tie them up, see? Griswold is about to be sprung. Now, Jason Benedict has asked Margot to come to Washington, D.C. and help out with the case. They're hoping Griswold will... Lead them right. to the missing documents. Hey, it's good thinking. It's a great opportunity for Margot. How long would she have to be in Washington? Well, a few days, and I was not really that thrilled about the idea at first, but as Max said, it is a great opportunity. How will you manage with the boys? <laughs> well, Graham will manage. I mean, Marilyn's going to help. Pretty lady to my left has offered her services as well. Now, Margot is a little reluctant to go. John in the hospital and the whole Lafferty case about to go before the grand jury. So, any minor prodding and encouragement to push her in that direction would be greatly appreciated. You got it. Thank you. Oh, speak oh there speaking is. of the devil. Oh, come on in, babe. Oh, what's the room? Come on. You ate dinner. Oh, what would I do without you? Excuse me, I just want to go check on that okay, sock. Okay, thanks. Well, looks like I beat Jess and Duncan here, at least. I bet you did. So, what was it this time? Oh, I wanted to run some things by that desk clerk at the Yardley, that's all. Well, what happened to I closed the book on the Lafferty case? I mean, let's face it, all the evidence points to Connor. Well, I told you, there were some other things, some loose ends I wanted to clear up before the grand jury meets it, which Mr. Tenoff at the Yardley couldn't do, unfortunately. Well, speaking of loose ends, I heard about Jason's offer. Boy, a chance to work with the feds. Maybe find those missing documents. Be a hero. So how come you haven't packed your bags yet? I'll tell you this. I'd love to have a shot at something like that. Damien, hi. How you doing? I've had better days. Hello? I swear, I must be psyched. Uh, I just left a message on your mom's machine. Now do me a favor, all right? Please, 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 please call Barbara tomorrow and make an appointment for your fitting because there's only six weeks left until the wedding and I don't want any near disasters like there was at Ivan's wedding. Okay, right, we I'll do, do it ASAP. Fabulous. Okay. Thank you. And there's a few other details I wanted to, to go over with you about the wedding. Do you mind? No. Caleb, can I talk to you? No, please, I gotta talk to Damien. Come on. Let's go.
about Caleb is this is about home. Yeah, it is. Just hear me out. Um, I just wanted to say I don't blame you for getting into it. Somebody's got to teach him that other men's wives are off limits. Apparently, he didn't get the message after he and I got into it a few years ago. So, then I would do calligraphy on the envelopes. What do you think? It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Great. So what's up with you? You look fabulous tonight. Thank you, so do you. Are you meeting somebody? Are you batching it? Uh, no, actually, I called Craig to join me for a drink, but so far he's a no-show. Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. Nothing! No, nothing. I think Craig is a very nice guy. And I'm sure his wife does, too. Oh. Are you suggesting I have some sort of interest in him beyond... Hey, Jules, give me a little credit, will you please? I know the guy's a happily married man. In fact, I see it as a major plus. You see, I get a gorgeous escort who makes me feel gorgeous. I get no hassles at the door when we say goodnight. And best of all, I get no commitment, which as we both know is something I don't want right now. Now, about this wedding, I just wanted you to know I'm not wearing a monkey suit. <laughs> better go talk to him. Excuse me one minute. What? What did I say? <laughs> Emily, uh, I guess you don't recognize me as my clothes. Right? <laughs> you excuse me? My name's Rob, from Moscone's. Oh, I spotted you on the bench press yeah. the other day. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, I'd love to. Hi. Hello there. Hi, I don't believe you have the night off. <laughs> I don't believe well, look it. who's talking. Oh. Is Shannon come around yet? Oh, yeah, she's fine. She's fine. Oh, uh, Mom, I want you to meet Rob. Rob. Hi. Rob. Hi. Uh, and this is Larry. Hi. Hi. We met nice at Moscone's gym. Oh, very nice to meet you. Uh, are you going to stop by our table later? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh... The strangest thing happened to me. And uh, i got to tell you about it. I finally met Royce's twin sister. I'll talk to you this later. Emily. Oh! I am so glad you got my message. What's the matter with you? It's not so urgent. No, well. no. More like desperate. What? What is it? Craig, I could really use some cheering up. I feel like dancing with a, with a pal. Sure. Well, <clears throat> your daughter certainly seems to be playing the field tonight. First, um, what's his name? Rob? No. Craig? Oh, Craig, he doesn't count. He's married. I've checked both suites. Mrs. Grimaldi's still not here. Well, looks like Mrs. Grimaldi may not be singing tonight after all. I'm sorry, it's just this whole scene. Um, replete with the perfect English butler, it's like a scene out of Masterpiece Theater. You know, I mean, uh, you, I don't think we have very much in common. Hmm? According to Lou, uh, you inherited the family art gene. A mutation I'm still trying to comprehend. <laughs> well, yeah, if you call framing posters art. Well, excuse me, ex-poster framer, since Lou and company came stalking me and I've now lost a job. Hmm. Well, your dad tells it differently. Told me about scholarships and uh, your painting, and uh, and Lou said you even have a Halbert vase. Uh, I mean, you know, that's not your everyday, ordinary accessory. You know. Well, I like to feel good, and that vase makes me feel good. Huh? Mm. Well, I'm a Halbert fan myself. Oh, good. Oh. So, you ready um, to get started? Started. Getting to know each other. That's what we came here for, remember? Yeah. You, you go, go first. first. <laughs> <laughs> So 
much wasted time. No, it's it's just... no regrets. You're right. The only thing that matters is what we feel. You can't let anything ever come between us again. Ever. Damien needs to know. Already. Oh, great. We're sounds good, too. Um, he's going to be a little late, uh, but we can start without him. Uh, no, that's all right. We can probably uh, hold things. We can hold things, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Please, join. Thanks. Join. How are you this evening? How are you doing? Nice you guys. Oh, these monkeys can't be mine all washed and ready for bed. Oh, no complaints. Who is the magician around here? <laughs> well, they got kind of wet playing with the sub, so I figured I'd better put them in their PJs. Uh -huh. Here they are. Well, that's a miracle. So, who wants to get tucked in now? Me. Uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You're, you, I tuck you in, then you come with me. I'd be happy to help. I think this is something for Grandma to do. Come on, Dan. Don't you want to help with the honors? Sure. If I get to pick the bedtime story. Excuse me, Miss McKay. Yeah. Did you just come from the hospital? Yeah, I did, Jerry. Why? Well, that uh, lady, Shannon. Is she doing okay? Oh, yeah, her fever's broken, and she's, um, she's gonna be just fine. Did they ever find out what she had? Yeah, it was something called Cotsgrave fever, and she got it from a spider bite. Well, it said in the Argus that it might be contagious. Well, that's only very rarely. Why do you ask? Well, it's just because, um, my mom told me she was with Shannon at Fashion before the ball, and if it is contagious, then with her immune system and all, it, you know, it just... Hey, Jerry, sweetie, your mom's doing great. And there's every reason to think she's going to keep on doing great for a long, long time, okay? Okay. <laughs> Jerry, honey, I could use your help in here. Uh, excuse me for a minute. Sure. <sighs> Poor kid. Oh, yeah. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Yep. So Duncan's still at Memorial? Mm-hmm. Man, this must be rough on you. <laughs> I don't think I could be as supportive of Shannon under the circumstances. Oh, I'm no saint, Margo. I couldn't stand a chance against a ghost, however. Well, Duncan fell in love with you after he thought she was dead. Yeah, but it's different now. If he were to lose her twice, without really resolving this in his own mind, and I don't think I would ever really have him completely back. Mm -hmm. John was wrong. This is pure nectar. Mm. It's good to see you attacking mm. that with such gusto. Mm. And why not? I'm ravenous. For this. And for my life. Our life to start over again. Well, Duncan, when I heard that you were here day and night, saving me, it was... What? It's just that I know what a fighter you are. I was the one that gave up. True. One bullet. True. Yes, but you're here with me now, and that's all I want to think about. So tell me the truth. Just how out of it was I? <laughs> well... You were quite the tigress. You were thrashing about. You were trying to tear out your IV. Mm -hmm. Hallucinating. Mumbling. You were crying out as though you were still in the jungle. What sort of things was I saying? You were saying one name in particular. It was... Devere. Hmm. I don't know anyone named Devere. Maybe I was saying, I'm here. Find me. <laughs> well, uh, this makes it two trials by fire. No, three. The truth is, I was pretty thrown about you and Jessica. And believe it or not, 
I was afraid for a few moments that I might actually lose you. But not now. Not after how you stood around for me and, and you took care of me. In a way, this spider bite is a blessing. <laughs> Shannon. I know, I know it'll be very hard on Jessica. But she'll understand eventually. When she was there in the beginning, she knew how it was for us. And I want to be just as supportive as she's been for me. I mean, that goes without saying for Bonnie. I mean, even though our wonderful loft is gone, we still have the castle. And the plaque where you propose. Bonnie can come see us on weekends. Shannon, we can make uh, things uh, for uh, her. Slow down, slow down. Slow down, Duncan. Listen to Before me. Missed too much as it is. Uh, uh, the, what I'm trying to tell you is, it's not that simple. My feelings for Jessica and Bonnie. I know, Duncan. I know how loyal you are. And I love you for that. My feelings go beyond loyalty. I love them. Of course you do, my darling. Of course you do. Shannon, what I'm trying to tell you is... I didn't marry Jessica out of loyalty or obligation. I married her because I was in love with her. Then and now. Look, I'm not knocking the idea of you being my brother. You know, when I was a kid, I, I wanted a brother. I used to fantasize about what my life would be like if... Look, the, the truth is, is that I don't do instant relationships. You know, I like to, to hang back, to check things out, let people check me out. I'm not the easiest person to get to know. <laughs> you think you're hard to get to know. <laughs> there was a time in my life, very recently, as a matter of fact, when... I hardly knew myself at all. Well, then, that must be a killer gene, because Lucinda is certainly sure as to who she is and what she wants. Yeah. She's got such a light touch, oh, doesn't yeah, she? Light. <laughs> but if you're family mm -hmm. and you need help, she's right there to pull you out. She can be the most generous, loving person I've ever met. On the other hand, when she's threatened, yeah. faint shades of Gloria. Uh, our mother. I take it that that's not good. Mm -mm. So, uh, what was your mother like? Uh, Dorothy? Yeah. She was wonderful. Loving. Always there with a hug. <laughs> she worried too much. Always worried that, um, we didn't have enough money. But she was a genius at making do. You know, if, if you needed fabric for the, for the Christmas pageant or, um... You got an art scholarship to a school 60 miles away and you weren't sure how you were going to get there, you got it. Whatever, whatever you wanted. Whatever made you happy. You know, I miss her. Um, tell me about the art scholarship. <laughs> Well, there's not really much to tell. Um, I love art. You know, I, I love the feeling of creating something that's all mine. It's all me. Are you any good? <laughs> I've had my moments. Maybe um, if I was more disciplined. But I think when they passed the genes out, I think uh, Lucinda got all the drive. And you got all the talent. Not all of it. Come here, take a look at something. What do you think of that? I like it. It's very warm. And yet very fragile. It's done by the real talent family. Our sister Neil. That was the sister who died. Somehow I don't think I'm doing so good in the cheering up department. No. no. I just can't stop thinking about meeting Royce's twin. It took every ounce of willpower I had not to run after and tell her to take the next rail out of here. Talk about siblings from hell. 
I think Samantha's a woman that can take care of herself. Hey, Pop. Hmm? You know you haven't taken your eyes off your stepdaughter since we sat down? I guess I was just thinking about what she, uh, what she said when we were here. You and Emily were here? When was that? You were busy with Shannon. Actually, she was, um, she was talking about moving out of the carriage house. Well, I, I hope you discouraged her. Not exactly. Honey, you know, it's a very special time for us. And as soon as that little girl's born, it's not going to be just us for at least 18 years. Well, at least. Look, I, I, it's not that I don't appreciate what you're trying to say, I do. It's just that Emily needs us. She's still going through a very rough time, even if she won't admit it. Well, maybe she'd deal with it a little bit better if she wasn't so protected. You know, she had her space and, um, we had ours. Look, I know my daughter very, very well. And I know what kind of mistakes she can make when she's this needy. Believe me, she's safer with us. Are you still thinking about this twin thing? Ah, uh, no. Actually, I was thinking about you. And how I have absolutely no right asking you what I really want to ask you. What's that? Well, I heard that you and Sia are having problems. Where'd you hear that? Um, Kirk. Kirk. He sort of hinted. Oh, Kirk did. Was he so threatened by my presence in Worldwide, he's now resorting to spreading rumors about me? That is low even for Kirk. Oh. Well, that's a relief. What? That is not true. Look, Craig, if you ever need a friend, for any reason, I'm here for you. Still no sign of Mrs. Grimaldi. Should I try tracking her down? No. No, no, I'm sure she'll, yeah. she'll be here soon. You know, I really feel for Damien. What do you mean? Well, I got a bad feeling. I just called the farm, talked with Mama. Aaron's still there. Holden hasn't picked him up yet. She hasn't heard from Holden. Obviously, Damien hasn't heard from Lily. I just got the feeling that Holden finally went too far. What do you mean? Well, Caleb, don't, 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 don't even go there, all right? I know exactly why you're jumping to these conclusions. You and I both know. Can't you just put the past to rest and just forget about it? Just let it be? Why don't you tell that to my little brother? I didn't mean to pressure you. I've done that in the past. I was wrong, but... We know how we feel. We know we belong together. Damien needs to be told. If you want to tell him together because you're afraid... I'm, I'm not afraid like that. I know Damien would never hurt me. It's just... What? What is it? He loves me. He helped me so much. He was there when I thought everything was hopeless. He 
made me believe in myself again. He made me whole again. Well, I can understand you being grateful. But you mustn't confuse gratitude with love. I do love him. But not the way that I love you. Of course, but I do care about the way he feels. So what are you saying? Time. I just need some time to figure out a way to tell him without hurting him. Okay. All right. I'll give you all the time you need. I can wait as long as I know that we have a future together. know that we do. Oh, Damien has so much pride, I just... I couldn't live with myself if I destroyed that. Sorry to be so it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Hi. Hi. Why, why don't you go tell your mom everybody's here? All right. Thanks. Can I get you a drink or something? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. You relax. I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. Hi, nice Nancy. You. Hello, hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Well, well, the boys finally drifted off. Yeah, that story was really starting to get to me. I mean, I'll have to come back and see how it turns out. Oh, Mac, the kid's nose just keeps getting longer and longer every time he tells a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the Griswold thing. Oh, jeez, pushy, pushy. Okay, I'll admit it's uh, it's tempting. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to pull out the big guns here. I'm at the office today, and I get a call. This person says to me, "I got a two-week singing engagement at the Capitol Club." Well, guess where the Capitol Club is located? In Washington D.C. You didn't tell me. I just did. Oh, all right, all right, you got me. I'm gonna go. <laughs> but but I'm counting on you guys to keep the home fires burning here. These boys take the a boys, lot of the energy. The boys, the boys, the boys will be fine. We'll have Marilyn here by day, dawn by night. Mm. And I want you to remind Jason when you get to D.C., you tell him we still haven't gotten a clear set of prints from that armored car. I just want to make sure you understand how much I appreciate you. I want to thank you for your patience and understanding. I know some of the things that Shannon said about setting. Yeah, they were. That's why I stayed there. Because I wanted to make sure she understood that I loved you when I married you. And I love you just as deeply now. <sighs> Shannon, what I'm trying to tell you is I didn't marry Jessica out of loyalty or obligation. I married her because I was in love with her. Then and now. I see. Well, then I apologize for underestimating you. I should have realized you could never commit to something as serious as marriage without... Oh, Duncan, I'm sorry. I've been so selfish. I... I haven't seen how hard this must be for you. It's okay. You just take all the time you need to work things out. And I'll be patient. I know in the end, you'll follow your heart. You always have. Come on, Shannon, you gonna play cards or what? Um. What happened between you and Duncan? What'd you decide? Oh, uh, um, I, I don't know. He's a... He's in a really difficult situation with Jessica and Bonnie, and... You know, I know he loves me, I can feel it when we're together, but... I don't want to make things any more difficult for him, or Jessica. I have a 
child together, you know. You've been gone for three years. Kind of gives them the advantage, doesn't it? What happened in Africa? Tell me, what happened to you? Well, I learned I was a survivor. Draw. That's it? You were a survivor? Then I'm going to have to wait for the movie version to come out? <laughs> okay, okay, I will. Did Tom get everything straightened out with immigration? Oh, who knows? Mm. Ooh, I think that's going to be a gift, but... <laughs> so what are you going to do about this marital situation? You know, I'm just not sure. I know that Duncan has told me that he's in love with her. Maybe the easiest thing to, for me to do would be to just disappear and go poof. You know. The easiest thing? Oh, for you? No, of course not. You mean you would just run away like that? Uh, of course not. No, I know he loves me and I know I can get him back. Yeah, well, I never thought you were the runaway type, you know. <laughs> you always seem very determined to me. The martyr bit doesn't fit you at all. Ah. <laughs> no, you're right. You know, what would my dear old granddad think if he saw me giving up so easily? I mean, no O'Hara has ever run away from a fight, fair or otherwise. Thank you, John. And thank you, Jin. Uh, I wanted to tell you about Neil myself. I guess your father must have told you everything, huh? No. Um, after I realized Lucinda wasn't about to give up, I did some digging at the local library. You know, newspapers, who's who. Figured I'd better know what I was getting myself into. No wonder you didn't jump at the chance to meet me. Oh, now listen, Sammy. Royce, it's... Sammy? Yeah? You won't believe what I just had. Salmon, um... Sa sa That's sa moose, sir. Well, right. It, it melts in your mouth. Uh, salmon's one of Graham's specialties. Mm. Boy, he can really make a mean uh, a smoked salmon and onion omelet, too. Oh. <sighs> what time is it? Uh, you all have a place to stay? Don't have to ask me twice. How about it, Sam? Hmm? Thanks, but um, I don't think so. <sighs> Devere? Are you there? Devere? Leaving already? Well, I'm wide awake, but daughter number two is a party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe the three of you should go home and go petty bye. Yeah. So, I'll walk you to lunch. Good night, sister. Good night, good night. Good night. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? I miss you tonight. Lily, what's the matter?
as tomorrow, for as the world turns. Thank you.